Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Friday. I Doug Goddard and Kevin Vaughn, Linda Clark, 14 folks here already. Nancy Horvath, good morning. Oh, look at all of Freddie coming in now saying hey. Good day. And uh, Joan Riggs, good morning. Judy Hatch, good morning. Sandy Sauerbeck and Ken Woods, Gene Hardwig. Good to see you, all of you. Paul Wolf and Barry and Margot Davis. So I am here, right? And um, man, it's warm. So I had to put on my tropical stuff. <laughs> so I decided to do it from another corner here. I've got, I've got a little bit of, uh, I've got a little bit of uh, some some plants behind me. I don't know if you can see those or not, but I tried to make it tropical looking. I've got the heat up to 85 just because I can. <laughs> so, no, we're not we're not at 85. But I thought it appropriate to wear tropical gear for just finally having some having some uh, some heat back in the house. We had it all last night, which was a change from uh, from previous from previous days anyway. So we are here and. Uh, see here. Yep. So let's see. Joy, Joy and Steve Yambor. Hello. Kevin and Chris Vaughn. I'm sure Chris is there too. Tracy Crutz. Good morning. We do. I'm celebrating with my tropical shirt. Linda Wolf. Good morning. Sherry Riggs. Good morning. Scott Johnson. Good morning. Hi, Amy Bowerman. Robin Allen. Norma Bentley. Don Jones. And Joanne Butters. Hello. And uh, Carrie is with us. Barbara Shoot is with us. Larry and Carolyn Thomas are with us. So good to see you all. It is um, uh, Friday, and uh, we only do these sometimes on Fridays. Um, so um, the truth of the matter is, um, it's um, I get another day off during the week, supposedly, when I can. So um, what I tend to do is during the colder months, uh, I make that Friday so I can try to get a Friday Saturday together and then um, um, we will well I shouldn't say that in the warmer months I definitely do it Friday Saturday uh, and then in the colder months sometimes I make it either a, sometimes I'll try a Monday although that that hasn't been working this pandemic although it, it has relieved a little bit of the day-to-day -day, um, you know running around as far as that goes um, it's kind of just spread the work out over a longer period of time. So you no longer say, well, I'm going to start working at eight. I'm going to finish at five. It's just kind of you do it as it develops. So that's kind of um, what and, and it's not just ministry. I know that there's lots of folks working from home and they found that out to be the case, too. And poor Carrie. Um, well, I should say that the, your entire staff um, has found that to be the case. So uh, certainly. Carrie and uh, and Rita, um, I, every, we're all working, doing stuff from home. So the texts and the emails and everything else comes in at all hours, and we just take care of them as we can. So, so I, it's, um, we're going to get moving. I had said the big news about Ash Wednesday. Look for that to come out very fairly quickly, as far as a way that you can deter, uh, make a reservation if you'd like to come and have imposition of ashes, and um, then, um, uh, but if you don't feel comfortable coming in now, that's going to be when you come in, this is what you're going to should expect. You will have a time. And when you come, you're going to go through the Allen, uh, you're going to go through the Allen, um, uh, the Park Avenue do doors uh, into the narthex. There you will be met and you will be asked some questions asked to, uh, about COVID, your, your, how you're feeling, your temperature will be taken. We're going to ask you to be masked and to practice social distancing. And um, then um, then we will allow people to stay, stay social distance and come up the main aisleway where I'll be up uh, towards the chancel there and we'll have that opportunity. Now, um, where the organ will be playing and we'll also, you'll be able to see uh, the new screens that we have in the sanctuary. So those are things that uh, we, we look forward to. So it's not going to be, uh, we're not, we do ask that people don't, uh, that 
not to sit down. Um, uh, we think that we're going to have this spaced out enough so that you'll have a resonance time to be able to be in the sanctuary, um, and um, we hope that that works out. We're also working on our ability to have limited in-person. That'll be by reservation. And don't worry, I mean, we're going to do online, but we're going to make sure that there's a way for folks to call, too. And we'll see what the desires of folks are. Number one, the virus has to continue to uh, be at levels which allow it. And uh, right now, numbers look really, really good, and they're still on the decline. I mean, the only thing to worry about, I shouldn't say the only thing, I think the biggest worry uh, is what's going to happen with the, these variants that are out there because now they say that the UK variant, which is more transmissible, um, is, and it's already present uh, in the county, in Wayne County, and certainly in Washtenaw, um, and um, in Oakland, and Macomb, that if that becomes the dominant uh, thing, that, that things might get tough again. We pray it doesn't, but if it does, we'll take action, we'll do the, the things. So uh, there we go. That's, uh, that's kind of our plans. So it's exciting, it really is. So we're going to go over here to our, uh, you just see. Uh, hi, Cindy Winslow, Andrea Seabloom, yes, and Mose and Marsha, good morning. Talking to you from uh, tropical uh, Dearborn this morning. And my Aunt Mary, Mary Ayers, good morning to you. And Ann Winslow, I think, good morning. Barbara Wolf, good morning. All right. So it is Friday, and uh, oh, wait a second. Yes, it is. I've got. I, we were joking just before we came on, Mose, that um, I got it cranked up to eighty-five just because I can. <laughs> we're not. We're not. Uh, we're not. We're really not there. We just keep, we keep it at sixty-seven. Barbara Shoot is uh, bringing a message for a prayer request. And Barbara, is that for yourself? Is that is that a prayer request for yourself? For the heart congestion and anemia? All right, well, we'll come back and check on that, but we'll certainly pray. Certainly we'll pray. Oh, it is for you. Okay, well, Barbara, we are going to lift you up in prayer. Judy Southern, good morning. So our devotions for today, uh, are Friday, February 12th, and uh, this the psalm that we're going to begin with is Psalm 51. So let's... Uh, Let's ask for God's grace in our lives by illumining us as we read his scripture together. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. Indeed, I was born guilty, a sinner when my mother conceived me. You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth 
will declare your praise. For you have no delight to sacri in sacrifice. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Do good to Zion in your good pleasure. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in right sacrifices, in burnt offerings, and whole burnt offerings. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. So the only thing that I want that uh, struck me today as I read this is that sometimes I get questions about the Old Testament and then and uh, the new versus the New Testament and, and uh, the Gospel of Jesus Christ. And you know there was some very very early um, scholars and, and theologians, ministers, and I'm going back into the three to four hundred A.D. Um, who really made the argument that uh, that the God of the New Testament was different than the God of the Old Testament. Now, they were uh, declared heretics uh, as basically being off base and told, don't teach, uh, that's a wrong teaching, don't teach it. Um, and, um, but uh, it's one of the things that I think as logical and thinking human beings that makes it a little bit easier for us to perhaps comprehend a little bit is the purposes of the sacrifice. Now, you guys, and most of you join us every day or virtually every day. We do a lot of readings, uh, and so we hear about these sacrifices. The sacrifices, it's the purpose of the sacrifice, right, that gets lost, because it can become this thing that, that you, you provide a sacrifice to appease God. Um, and... Um, that's, and, and, but God, again and again, in the prophets, and we see this in Isaiah, maybe we'll see it again today in Isaiah, when we read that one, certainly in Amos and others, Micah, that um, what God is saying is, look, what purpose does that sacrifice serve for me? I can create out of nothing. I don't need your sacrifice. But what God wants is, um, is his people to hold him uh, in the proper perspective, which is number one in our lives. And uh, so the importance here of the sacrifice is the fact that it's the attitude with which it's given. So if it's given because it's done in trust, it's done in faithfulness, it's done because uh, it demonstrates, when I say trust, that we really demonstrate that we rely on God, that we're willing to give something up. And God doesn't ask for us to give up uh, the leftovers. He asks us to give up the best. Uh, that's the, the prime sacrifice. And that he's asking for in the Old Testament, but here we see in this song that it's not. It's this. It's this um, realization that we all fall short of the glory of God, and that through intention and unintentional, we do things that uh, that are displeasing to God, that aren't godly, and that. Um, but He gives us this opportunity to recognize it through the Holy Spirit uh, and the Scriptures, and that we and, and rebuking, rebuking by our our fellow believers. Um, and that we can come back with, with that uh, repentance, that sorrowfulness, um, and, uh, and, the and having a contrite heart, saying, I need that, and then trusting that God forgives. He blots out those transgressions. I, you know, a while ago, um, I still use the word sin, uh, because that certainly is a word in the New Testament, it's hamart hamartia, but... Um, in my preaching, I tend to uh, not hit on send uh, so much because it's got such a loaded term nowadays. And uh, so I, I like to refer to it more as separation. It's our separation from God uh, in our actions and thoughts. And uh, so that means that sometimes we do things that aren't godly, and that's because we, uh, we made that decision because we were separated from God. So uh, perhaps that's a better way of thinking about it or looking at it. It is for me. Uh, I'll find out if I'm right someday. So, all right, we'll go down here to our. Now here's Isaiah. We're in Isaiah again, and this is uh, or still, and this is Isaiah chapter 61 verses 1 through 9, and and this is we've been hearing God's word, right, um, and which is God's words coming through Isaiah. 
but sometimes, especially in this latter part, um, it's a hard time to figure out who's exactly speaking. Is it God speaking through Isaiah or is it Isaiah? But this is Isaiah, and this is this is testimony from Isaiah, because we heard in the Psalm that the return for that forgiveness, what what um, is is not only the reward of a of a relationship with God, but it's also so that others might be but be made aware of God's ability to forgive through our own actions and relationships. So this is Isaiah responding to that. So let's listen. This is. Isaiah 61, verses 1 through 9. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall rise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. Strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. Foreigners shall till your land and dress your vines. But you shall be called priests of the Lord. You shall be named ministers of our God. You shall enjoy the wealth of nations, and in their riches you shall glory, because their shame was double, and dishonor was proclaimed as their lot. Therefore they shall possess a double portion. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. Now we go back, right? That's that, that last part of it was Isaiah, and then we get this one. Now, exactly who is this? Now, this is God coming back into it. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. May God add his reading, his blessing to this reading of his holy word. And we'll move on to our uh, epistle reading in the New Testament, which we're in 2 Timothy, a wonderful letter to uh, a young, young priest. It's uh, chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. Paul, writing to Timothy, you must understand this, that in the last days, Distressing times will come, for people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, inhuman, implacable, slanders, um, prolificates, brutes, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, holding to the outward form of godliness but denying its power. Avoid them, for among them are those who make their way into households and captivate silly women, overwhelmed by their senses and swayed by all kinds of desires, who are always being instructed and can never arrive at a knowledge of the truth. As James and Jambres opposed Moses, so these people, of corrupt mind and counterfeit faith also oppose the truth. But they will not make much progress, because as in the case of those two men, their folly will become plain to everyone. Now you have observed my teaching, my conduct, my arm in life, my faith, my patience, my love, my steadfastness, my persecutions, and suffering the things that happened to me in Antioch, Iconium, and Lystra. What persecutions I endured, yet the Lord rescued me from all of them. Indeed, all who want to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. But wicked people and impostors will go from bad to worse, deceiving others and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believe, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood 
You have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. So ends this reading, the word of the Lord. So uh, again, as we as we uh, kind of as, as we kind of soak in this, it uh, comes there. We see a whole list, uh, an ungodly long list of um, behaviors uh, that are going on that uh, that God is warning about, and it's it's not just that these people have these behaviors; it's that these people um, outwardly claim to be religious, outwardly claim to be um, Christian, and that uh, they, they're kind of following along, and um, they're, they're, making, um, uh, they're making intrusions into these churches, and so Paul is telling Timothy, be careful, be careful. Um, in fact, some of these folks might have been um, people that Timothy had been working with, and uh, so the warning is coming, you know, look, uh, judge, you know, judge by what their behavior is, and if their behavior consists of these things, then stay away from them. Stay away from them. There's this uh, thing here that he calls silly women. I I hate that. That well, hate's a strong word. I dislike that interpretation, and the fact that he calls out just women for it, because before that he's talking about everybody. So for um, I. My, my sense is is that the church that uh, Timothy was working uh, towards uh, founding probably uh, very early in their formation, uh, that that was probably a, maybe a problem that was going on very specifically and locally to that. Maybe that's just my justification, but uh, that's my understanding. That's what I've been taught. Our gospel reading, Mark move away from Paul, polarizing figure that he is. All right. Mark chapter 10, verse 32 through 45. Now, uh, this starts off with the pronoun they, which is, we can take that to be the disciples and Jesus. They were on the road going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus was walking ahead of them. They were amazed, and those who followed were afraid. He took the twelve aside and began to tell them what was to happen to them, to him, saying, See, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death. Then they will hand him over to the Gentiles. They will mock him, and spit upon him, and flog him, and kill him, and after three days he will rise again. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want to, you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink? Or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. And Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them. And their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. So we see this um, uh, in different, in almost virtually every gospel, with the exception of John, really. And um, 
and since John was one of the bad actors here, maybe he, that's why he decided not to put it in there. But um, in one, and I can't remember what his, whether it was Matthew or Luke, this, it isn't James and John that come to Jesus, but it's their mother saying, hey, put my, put my sons in this position of prominence, power next to you. And, um, but the end result is the same, whether it was them themselves or their mother, is that the other 10 disciples got pretty angry with them. And so this Jesus handles this dust up by trying to explain, you know, um, hey, look, um, you're not, they were looking at this through worldly eyes, right? Their definition of the way things should go were, was the path that they saw the world was, is that, that people that had power made the decisions, right? Then uh, they got the benefits. And um, Jesus is saying, that's not it, right? You're not, not directly, he's not saying you're not getting it, but you, you know, are you, do you really know what you're asking for? And um, so are you prepared to do everything? Now remember, this is coming right after he talks about this whole passion week that he's approaching in Jerusalem. And we know that uh, that uh, the final thing he, he's talked to is he talks to his disciples several times, and they just don't get it, right? This, especially they don't they never hear that last thing after three days, I'm going to rise again, and they all have different reactions to it. So this was two of them saying, "Well, if this is coming to an end, put me in a place where it might continue for us." And were they asking because of the blessings of God and the, and the ministry, or were they asking because they, they wanted positions of power? We think the we think the latter, because he talks when he talks to everybody. Remember, right? Um, what happens when when people put leaders in in the in the non sacred positions, right? The rulers lord it over them, and then they become tyrants. That's not not what I'm teaching you. Because if you want to be great in the kingdom, you need to be a servant to all. All right, that's it. Let me come back over here to the Facebook page, see what we've got. So Sherry, I see you have a question. Were they asking to take over for him? And I think I kind of addressed it a little bit. We don't really know, you know, what their, what their, uh, uh, the predication that they were making there. Um, I think that to say that they were just saying, hey, let us continue your ministry uh, for the goodness of it would be a stretch, right? I don't, I, but I also don't think that they were looking to consolidate power either. I think it's probably somewhere between the two. I see me too, so that's probably the silly women thing, right? Yeah. Hi, Judy Martin. All right, JoLynn and Lee, how are you? Good morning. And Jerry, uh, Jerry Lynn Robinson is with us. Good morning. Robin Allen is with us. All right, so we do have um, all right, so Barbara, we need to pray for you today. We're going to pray for others, too. Okay. So I hope my explanations were there. If they weren't, send me a message. We'll work on it. We're up to 34 folks on a Friday. That's wonderful. I hope uh, your Fridays is, the rest of your day is blessed and uh, Saturday also. Um, but the other thing is um, this coming Sunday, the 14th, in addition to being Valentine's Day, um, is also what we call Transfiguration Sunday. So that's the Sunday before Lent starts, which officially begins on Ash Wednesday. And Lent is 40 days, just like um, just like our preparation for Easter, 40 days. But uh, you know, the, the Lenten period coming coming into Easter is 40 days, and and um, it's six Sundays. Uh, and the 40 days doesn't include Sundays. And this was, uh, we'll talk a little bit about that in the Bible study, which will begin a week from this coming Wednesday. Um, but um, the transfiguration is what we deal with, is the response, right, of uh, a theophany. A 
theophany, which means an appearance of God in somebody's life. And so we'll hear about uh, some very special disciples that were able to go with Jesus up to a mountaintop, just like when Moses was there, when he needed to speak to God, he went up on the mountaintop. They're going to go up on the mountaintop and some really unique things are going to happen. And we'll talk about those on Sunday. So it's Transfiguration Sunday. All right, let's pray. All right, Lord, we're coming to you in prayer today. And although we pray for the health of the world and uh, continued uh, in improvement in this pandemic that uh, has struck us worldwide, we just continue to pray that more and more vaccines will be made available and that everyone, uh, everyone who wants one will get one in, in, uh, in sooner rather than later. We saw that there was some good news that came about that yesterday. So we've gone from uh, potentially uh, having to wait until the fall until it was widely available to everyone that now it looks like that by uh, early summer to everyone who wants one should have been able to have it. So Lord, we pray that those people who are responsible for uh, producing these vaccines, that they'll be blessed and uh, that they will not uh, encounter any kind of uh, manufacturing problems that those vaccines will be pure, that they'll be effective, and Lord, uh, that uh, we can get them sooner rather than later. We pray for the leaders of uh, not just our country, but anyone who is in a position of responsibility, especially as it relates to caring for others, that they will be comforted, they will be guided, and that they will have everything made available to them so that the suffering in the world that we see might be eased. And then Lord, we pray for individuals and especially today, we want to pray for Barbara, uh, who's uh, run into some health problems. We pray for uh, healing for her. Lord, send your Holy Spirit. You are the great physician, and through them, we ask you to, to attend to Barbara and also to uh, guide us so that we can give her any support that she might need at this really difficult time. We pray that the healing be swift. We pray this not only for Barbara, but for all who are ill. And then, Lord, we pray and thank you for the blessings that are in our lives. Sometimes we feel put out. Sometimes we feel put upon. Sometimes we feel like we're not getting our fair share. And then and after uh, we let those feelings pass and we gain perspective, we can see how silly we are sometimes. So, Lord, we're here. We're provided for. And uh, sometimes... That means that uh, we just need to witness you in, in our days as we go forward. We ask you to make an appearance in our lives this day and each day. We ask all of this in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right. And Amy Bowerman is with us. I, I think I said hello to you before. I did say hello to you before, but I'll say it again. So God bless you all uh, again. Um, blessed Friday. Blessed Saturday, and I hope you join us online uh, for our service on Sunday. And then look, look for the signups if you'd like to participate in the imposition of ashes on Ash Wednesday. All right, I love you all. Have a great day. I'm going to catch up on some sleep. I don't know if you can see it in my eyes, but I got some bags under my eyes, and that's just from a complete uh, uh, not getting enough sleep over four days. So, uh, and uh, so I'm, I'm going to, I'm planning on a nap and taking care of a few things. But if you need anything, reach out to me. God bless. All right. Bye-bye.